Adobe recently released their CC 2017 collection, and I thought it'd be a good time to go through Premiere specifically and show some of the kind of upgrades that they've made to Premiere for CC 2017. The first thing I'm so glad that they did is they got rid of the stupid 2015.3 version. I don't know why they didn't do CC 2016. I'll never understand that decision, but it looks like they're back on track with CC 2017. But now let's talk about the features in Premiere because some of these are actually pretty cool and I think might be a good reason to upgrade if you've been on CC 2014, 2015, or 2015.3. Such a stupid name. Anyway, 2017. First feature, the main kind of feature that they've uh, highlighted is Team Projects, which is currently in beta. Basically, this allows multiple editors to work on the same project simultaneously, which is great for team collaborations. We do this all the time at work, but uh, not with this particular function. We have to close the project one place, open it somewhere else, and it's just kind of slow and cumbersome. If everyone can work on the same project at the same time, that actually be really cool, but I can imagine it has some conflicts with, you know, just someone's trying to do one thing while someone else is trying to do the same thing in a slightly different way on the same clip. They, Adobe says there are some smart conflict resolution features built into this, but seeing that it's in beta, I don't know that I would fully trust it 100% just yet, but definitely something cool to check out if you just want to play around with, you know, a couple people working on the same project. They've also added VR support. Not huge for me personally because I'm not doing a lot of VR projects, but I know there are a lot of people out there who are, and they've been hungry for more options and more flexibility in editing VR content. So it's great to see that Adobe is keeping up with it. I don't have any personal experience on how the new support works with uh, VR media, but definitely something to check out and try out if that is of interest to you. They've also added visual keyboard shortcut mapping, which is kind of just like icing on the cake. It's nothing too special, but it is a nice way to visually see what all the keyboard shortcuts are because before it was all menu driven and you just had to kind of know what the features were. You had to kind of search for them and, and, and tweak them if you wanted. I know me personally, I'm still working off the Final Cut keyboard shortcuts. I know it's terrible, but that's, hey, that's where I came, come from. And, you know, B for Blade just makes sense to me for some reason. But uh, I do like that they've got this kind of keyboard visualizer. So that makes it a little bit easier to see what's doing what. And you don't have to hunt through menus quite as much. They've also added enhanced open captions, which is kind of closed captions or subtitles, however you want to think about it. The subtitles and the closed captions in Premiere before were abysmal. So I really hope that this 2017 release fixes that and gives you a lot more flexibility because before it was so bare bones, I ended up actually getting an, an extra plugin from some third party just because the captions feature in Premiere was so terrible before. So I'm really glad to see that Adobe has kind of upgraded that hopefully and made it a lot better. They've also refined the Lumetri color tools, which this is where I have a problem with Adobe. They've killed SpeedGrade for all intents and purposes. Uh, they killed this with the 2015.3 release, and I was really disappointed to see that they had killed off SpeedGrade. I know a lot of people don't use SpeedGrade. They don't get it because the people in Premiere tend to just want the quick, easy uh, color correction stuff that's built into Premiere, and then anyone who's doing more advanced coloring goes to something like DaVinci Resolve or something like that for, for more advanced features. SpeedGrade hit a really nice middle of the road for me where it gave you more advanced features but it was still really fast and easy to use and just dynamic linked right between Premiere so you didn't have to make separate video files you didn't have to eat up hard drive space duplicating video footage with the colored footage versus the raw footage everything just works seamlessly between Premiere and SpeedGrade and so I'm really disappointed that a lot of other people didn't see that benefit and for whatever reason Adobe decided to kill SpeedGrade off now I reached out to Adobe and basically you know told them hey I really like speed grade you should keep it and they got back to me and basically said well you know a lot of that stuff we're putting into Premiere so you should have all those same tools and stuff right in Premiere which in theory is nice but the interface in Premiere is totally different than what is in speed grade and part of the reason speed grade is so fast and easy to use is because it has that proper coloring interface the interface in Premiere for Lumetri is these drop down panels and you have to scroll and, and everything's not just right there where you want it. You kind of have to hunt through menus for every clip that you want to color. 
And that's just not efficient. It's slow, it's cumbersome, and it's difficult to work with. So I told Adobe that if they're sticking with keeping everything in Premiere, that they really should update that graphic user interface for their coloring inside of Premiere. I would encourage you to do the same thing. Adobe has a great feature on their website where you can submit bug reports and feature requests. And I would say about 50% of the time I've done it, I've heard back from somebody at Adobe. So it means that they're actually getting the stuff, they're looking at it, they're reviewing it. And in one case, I requested a feature and on the next upgrade uh, for the CC suite, that feature was actually included. So it is cool. They do listen. So if you know if you want speed grade back, I don't know if that's going to happen. I certainly would like it to be back. But if they could just put speed grade inside of Premiere, I would love that too. The Lumetri panel with more color tools, great, but I just, I don't like the interface. Expanded distribu destination publishing, and this is all just kind of publishing directly from the applications. I don't particularly care for it too much, but hey, if you like the easy workflow of just sending something uh, right from your Adobe software to uh, end destination, they've got some other options for you. This is really cool. They've got live text templates, and basically what this is is a dynamic link of sorts between Premiere and After Effects, so that if you build something that's animated and, and, and kind of cool in After Effects using some of the After Effects features, you can actually edit that text directly in Premiere without going back into After Effects. This makes it really fast and easy to just update text and change little tweaks. Maybe it's a, a typo in the name of somebody or you want to change a lower third to be for someone else's name. You can do that with these text templates so that you don't have to constantly keep going back into After Effects and, and dynamic linking again to new comps or whatever it is. You can just update it through that text template right in Premiere and you don't have to slow down by going into After Effects, which is a really nice feature and kind of cool that it works uh, the way it does. They've also added support for extra file formats, so that's always good, but to be expected. They've also improved audio effects, which <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I haven't tested these, any of these out uh, just yet, but it is nice that it's on their radar and they say they've improved it because some of the audio effects inside of Premiere are really uh, just not as good as they should be, just in terms, you know, kind of buggy. Um, they don't always work as well as you might like, and that's why there's an audio program called Audition. So I don't know why they didn't take the same philosophy to color correction and have color features inside of Premiere and then have SpeedGrade, a separate application for doing more advanced coloring. But I'm just back to my SpeedGrade rant now. But I, I just, I don't understand. Adobe, why did you kill off SpeedGrade, but you're going to keep Audition and you're going to keep all these other things. Um, They've also got some additional features, some more minor uh, tweaks, some faster uh, GPU accelerated effects. We've got some improvements to Dynamic Link, which in 2015.3 was kind of buggy for me. So I, I ended up actually kind of stopped, stopped using it between Premiere and After Effects, but let's hope they got that all sorted out. One cool thing is that they've added a global effects mute button. So basically you can turn off the effects for your entire sequence. So let's say you've done a lot of coloring, you've done some warp stabilization, you've done all this stuff, and you want to just preview your edit again without all of those effects on. You can just turn them all off globally rather than going into each clip, turning it off, or having some other method of doing it. Just a nice global effects mute that's really nice, really handy, and just makes it more efficient just to preview something without having to render it or wait for it to, to buffer or any of that stuff. So I, I do like that nice little, little tweak. Do keep in mind that if you decide to upgrade to CC 2017, this is kind of uh, hot off the press. So there may be some small bugs and, and issues in there. So I wouldn't recommend it for any professional work. Definitely test it out. Use it for maybe a personal project or a project that's already been completed and you just want to test around uh, in the software. When you go to upgrade and you do it in the Creative Cloud menu, make sure that when you hit update, you click this advanced options and that will let you keep your old versions. If you don't uncheck this box right here, and you have it remove the old versions, you'll have to re-download CC 2015.3 or CC 2014, whatever it is, because it will automatically take it away from you. So Adobe's trying to keep you on just one, uh, you know, the most the latest and greatest software. So when you upgrade to 2017, they want to delete all the old stuff, but you know, you might have old projects that you, you want to just open quickly with 2014. If you remove those old versions, you'll have to go down here, hunt through all the old, uh, previous versions 
in here and you have to go find the old stuff and it's just that's a hassle so make sure whenever you're upgrading any of these whether it's after effects premiere make sure you hit that advanced options and keep the old versions if you'd like to but that is it i'm glad to see that adobe is back on track with the proper proper naming cc 2017 for 2017 which is coming up pretty quick and i'm glad to see that they've got some nice features now all the other software applications after effects photoshop etc they've all gotten upgrades that you could check out as well there are some uh, nice things here and there but i figured i'd talk about premiere because that's primarily what i'm in the most considering i do a mostly video production but it is good to see that they keep uh, their their promise with this whole CC idea. You know, you subscribe and you get the updates every year, and they seem to be pretty good ones, especially this team projects. I'm really excited to test that out and see how it functions and how it works, because that could actually end up saving me a lot of time. 